Grazie, grazie per l'invito. Sono mo molto contento di essere qui sotto Vasari. Uh, and, um, uh, ma parlo di un quadro e ho una domanda veramente. Perché Rubens ha dipinto questo, questo soggetto in quella lo locazione? Allora... I also want to say uh, for the Europeans, the picture, although it is in the art gallery in Toronto, is currently in the museum at uh, the Rubens House at Antwerp. So it's much closer for you. It'll be there for another two or three months. So please, if you have the opportunity, it's a little less expensive perhaps to travel. Allora, uh, the Massacre of the Innocents by Rubens in the Art Gallery of Ontario is a virtual index of his experience in Italy, painted following his return from an extended stay there in the period around 1610, when he established his dominance in Antwerp. More than any other painting, uh, perhaps this monumental panel presented his new approach to narrative and style strengthened by Italian accents, such as Michelangelo, I'll come to Michelangelo in a moment. There are no preparatory sketches, uh, drawings, or oil sketches surviving for the painting, so we must work from the work itself um, in order to discover its source material. Rubens would have developed the painting in Antwerp, uh, in his studio, uh, from numerous copy drawings that he made in Italy of art past and present, uh, as well as engravings, le stampe, and that's w what I want to focus on in this talk, mostly will be the, the, the stampe. The painting features about a dozen monumental adult bodies, all deployed in dynamic poses along a foreground plane, with numerous dead and dying children the terrible biblical story, one of the most heart-wrenching narratives in the history of religious art to represent, is broken into a series of separate uh, but overlapping and independently conceived sequences. It is a painting that attracts attention to each aspect of itself. The composition is predicated on a tumultuous torrent of bodies, some entirely naked for reasons of formal display. The general visual disorder is surely a metaphor, too, for pain and brutality. The poses are notable for their stress tension and flexibility, from which the um, electrifying display results, only possible, importantly, in painting or drawing, uh, as opposed to sculpture, despite the numerous quotations from ancient sculpture that have been pointed out numerous times with this work, and I will not go into them in this talk. While the horror of the image is undeniable, uh, the numerous complicated foreshortenings are introduced as demonstrations of pure artistic skill to measure the pictorial space for the viewer, a response to the challenge and weight of Italian art history. And I think it's very important that the figures are slightly under life size, so it's not a pure illusion one-to-one -one with reality, but it's actually slightly miniaturized, and I think that's uh, 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 an important fact, which will become relevant. Um, so in addition to antique sculpture, the massacre also contends with painting, drawing, and printmaking of Rubens' time. Nearer contemporary sources are detectable in the Italian masters of the early 16th century, accessible to Rubens uh, in Italy, in, in Rome especially, who not by coincidence shared a deep predilection for sculpture and interpreted similar sources in their painting. And I draw attention to Michelangelo and also Polidoro da Caravaggio. To approach the ancients, Rubens made his own copies, but he also valued uh, intermediate sources in re with respect for antiquarian artists like Polidoro uh, and Mantegna also, and, and, who were, um, and those more in emotionally invested in that material as a rival to it, above all Michelangelo. And as it has been pointed out, Rubens adopted the pose of one of the soldiers from a figure of Christ in the resurrection. Uh, an example here, a drawing in Windsor Castle, uh, which was intended by Michelangelo for a fresco in the church of Santa Maria della Pace in Rome. 
Um, D, how do I go? Per avanzare. Okay, grazie. Um, the general sense of tumult arranged in a lateral frieze also recalls the Roman facade frescoes of Polidoro, um, who provided a more rugged version of Raphael's graceful style. The print sources were especially important for this challenging theme and presented an esteemed lineage to Rubens. This specific Old Testament narrative had already generated its own literate history as a demonstration piece in drawing uh, as recorded by a, a corresponding print. Uh, initiated, Raphael was not the first to depict this subject, but was uh, really, I think, the beginning of Rubens' exploration. And I think this helps answer the question as to why Rubens and his patron desired such an upsetting, such a difficult subject uh, for a prominent location in an Antwerp palace. Whatever local residence the subject had for Antwerp, the content was an art historical topos to address unto itself. And painting himself into art history was a prime motivation for Rubens in tackling this particular subject and carefully replaying his source material. And we know Rubens had reworked Italian prints into paintings right from the very start of his career, so it's sort of ironic for such a sophisticated picture that in fact it's almost a juvenile or elementary kind of exercise for him. The massacre arrogantly displayed uh, on a monumental scale what for Raphael was only a small paper print, the ambition to enlarge and supply a surrogate for a never executed Renaissance masterpiece sort of to fulfill the fictional promise then of what Raphael had done. The dialogue between a monumental painting and several engravings of the same subject provide evidence for the high respect given to prints in this period in both Italy and Northern Europe and something to always keep reminding ourselves of. So it was not the first print of the massacre, but the first one relevant in sequence for Rubens is Raphael's executed by Marc Antonio Rimondi around 1511. Importantly, it was also a demonstration piece prepared directly in response by a non-Florentine to the Florentine challenged, embodied by Leonardo and Michelangelo to create a rich narrative with active nude bodies uh, without, in Raphael's case, sacrificing his own distinct elegance and fluidity. It seems literally itself to be, uh, have been created to be copied to judge also by this sort of aggregate quality that it has. Raphael presented the story all on one level, like the Rubens, and while specific references are not explicit, they might include the nudity of the soldiers, the fl women's flowing hair, and the positioning uh, of some of the children. In swift response to Raphael's print, the Florentine Bandinelli made one of the same subject engraved by Marco Dente around 1520. It's a yet larger print, now on two sheets of paper, um, this fact alone betraying, again, the ambition and the arrogance to uh, one-up uh, the, the venerated prototype of Raphael's print. Bandinelli concentrates more on surface anatomy and musculature. Rubens is known to have copied this majestic print in sketches in his notebooks. The image is now more flagrantly violent and justifies the license that Rubin would exploit in treating this repulsive subject. Yet another large engraving of the subject was produced in Rome in 1561 by Giovanni Battista de Cavalieri. Uh, a theme uh, demonstrates that the theme, I think, continued to have commercial appeal in the print market. It presumably records the invention of another artist, uh, which has been considered to be either Bandinelli or Francesco Salviati, but I'm not aware that that's been definitively uh, addressed or answered, the, who made the original drawing for this. The this, this story is depicted on two levels, uh, as in Bandinelli's print, but it is more chaotic, taking on even further the character of a demonstration piece with a densely populated foreground, closer in, in a way to what Rubens would attempt uh, a century later. But spotting sources in Rubens' uh, Massacre of the Innocents perhaps misses the point of his intention. Um, there are 
few precise borrowings from these prints, as Rubens was rarely copying their inventions, but reworking them, uh, being inspired by them, and the same sources that they exploited. It does not reduce their importance for his image, but what I'm pleading for perhaps is Rubens not as the sort of human photocopier as he's often presented, but someone who's more literately looking at his sources, uh, absorbing them, uh, absorbing um, th them in a more uh, unusual way. The intrinsic artistic challenge in producing a uniquely blended response, even improving on these precedents, was all that mattered most. And I think it's interesting too that although Rubens allowed prints to be made of a number of his works, there is no print after the massacre, which counterintuitively I wondered if it's his way also again of triumphing over the print tradition by not then bringing us back to the print tradition by making a print but allowing the painting to be uh, the final word. Italian prints uh, representing the massacre as portable objects would have been known in Northern Europe to both artists and patrons and thus more relevant in contrast to the painted sources in Italy which only uh, itinerant artists and uh, obviously a few wealthy uh, people uh, like Rubens could have recently seen. Prints were relatively cheap, as we know, to purchase uh, and easy to share and had a greater public relevance than more difficult to see paintings often in private locations. And again, just a reminder that prints in a way are the public art uh, of, um, of Europe at this time in that they could be, again, they were mobile and could be distributed. Few of the monumental Italian treatments of the massacre impacted what Rubens would paint in Antwerp. Unlike the prints, they were created without, without much awareness of the others. Perhaps the most relevant is the uh, Della Rove Chapel in Santa Trinita in Rome by Daniele da Volterra. Um, or designed by Daniele da Volterra, uh, who supplied the high altarpiece. Um, for Rubens, it was an important lesson in the grandiose scale and the tumbling three-dimensional violence of his own panel. I, I rather wickedly didn't illustrate it because it's close by, but also, again, to imagine us almost at a table in Antwerp rather than in Rome, working from these prints in this kind of fantastical way. In a contrary style, Tintoretto painted the story uh, of the massacre on a canvas in the Scuola di San Rocco in Venice in 1580s, a version that Rubens would have seen, but importantly was also turned into a print. As much as he admired Tintoretto, the furious approach in Tintoretto's work was really not Rubens' intent in the massacre. One detail has been pointed out, the, the woman grabbing the sword uh, does appear in Tintoretto's work, so that seems to be one obvious quotation. And again, um, Sadler turned Tintoretto into a print, and I think that makes it m almost more significant to the subject here. It's relevant here to observe that Rubens' painting was designed for uh, a f up to be placed ab high up above a fireplace on a chimney in the main room of a palace, to judge from the Di Sotto in Su viewpoint and also tradition in uh, Antwerp. The original placement of the panel, elevated as a chimney piece respecting Antwerp custom, had implications for how the composition is approached in illusion illusionistic terms. It is also placed unusually high up relative to the proportions of the room. Um, it would have been such that um, the uh, bottom margin of the painting provided real dramatic potential for the artist and it impacted how the composition was developed. When the panel was in situ, the figures would have appeared precarious as if to fall out of the image and the spectator shifts involuntarily to avoid confrontation in real space. And this is something that Rubens obviously would have learned again and again from works like Daniele da Volterra's or um, Tintoretto's, and then of course, not just the subject, but Caravaggio and many, many others. Um, so it's something I think that doesn't come from the prince, but comes from his own experience. While Rubens was inspired by Italian artists for many formal considerations reviewed here, he was also con consciously countering long-held Italian prejudices against Northern European art. 
He did this by thoroughly embracing the nude human figure in action and surface anatomy, almost uh, on a campaign to elevate uh, his new hybrid national style to demonstrate that a northerner could work fluently in this more, say, cerebral manner. Yet if the massacre is a compellingly hybrid painting, it doesn't resemble any Italian work of art, really, and its specifically Flemish aspects survived the near irresistible pull of Italy. To stress, these include the painting's uh, uncomfortably graphic realism and attention to surface textures, its glistening technique, as well as the inclusion of an elaborated background. The introduction of disturbing violence owes as much to traditions of Northern European religious art and secular art as to ancient sculpture, Michelangelo or Polidoro, and just very generally a tradition you can, we can trace to artists like Bosch or Peter, Peter Bruegel the Elder, Peter Bruegel who also painted the massacre in a wintry setting. These sort of unnerving sharp contrast as well between beauty and ugliness, something that accentuates both in contrast is also a deliberate device that recalls numerous images of the mocking of Christ in Northern European art. Finally, the original patron of Ruben's panel is not firmly documented. The tantalizing suggestion that it was an Italian merchant, long resident in Antwerp, named uh, Giacomo Antonio Carena has recently been challenged in, in one of the volumes of the corpus. Nonetheless, the Rubens is, a, I think, a truly international painting addressing different tastes equally. As a luxury object in Antwerp, it placed as much value on the foreign as the native. If the Toronto massacre is a profoundly retrospective object, it points equally in many stylistic aspects to the direction of Rubens' mature career as a dominant painter in Europe. Grazie per l'attenzione. Thank mm -hmm. you.